Hey folks, welcome back to The Pulse. It is 10 o'clock Central Texas time, March 10th, and Babylon is burning within an hour, my friends. Holy buckets, this is our time. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Folks, this is going to be an epic stream. Everything started. It started. It is beginning, folks. It says the merchants will stand off and those in their ships will stand off and they will lament and cry out, oh my goodness, we, we bought and we sold there, right? They got rich. They got rich and it's all failing around us. You know, thanks to Elizabeth Warren, who really kind of pushed this thing over the cliff, she's going to have this on her hands. But folks, it has begun, in my opinion. It has begun. But pain, what is the purpose of pain? Pain is actually designed for our good. And folks, we're going to be talking about that today. We got a guest coming in, which you know who it is. Did you see that picture of rags in the thumbnail? Dude, he looks so like, I mean, talk about the ginger giant genius, man. He's looking good. He said that was the sum of all fears. So he's going to join us here in a little bit. But first thing I want to share with you is just I'm overwhelmed with today and what today means. It's Freedom Friday, certainly, and I'm not just like looking for content. Content is oozing out of the day that we are in. And folks, this is enormous. We're going to be talking about how to onboard the world. That's going to be the overarching theme, but we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff that's happening right this very minute. We're going to talk about that in the context of what you know, I think if you're a student of the Bible and you're paying attention to what's happening, you you saw this coming. Now, do you get it all right? No, we're not prophets, but we're paying attention. If you pay attention, you understand these cycles, and we are coming into it. This is it. Folks, it isn't going to be good. This is a bank run. This is a bank run. And the emperor has no clothes. So what is it? This is our time. Folks, you thought it was going to be good. It's going to be way better than you expected. And you're like, what are you talking about, Crypto Heartbeat? This stuff is failing all around us. Oh, no, the sky is falling. Yes, the sky is falling. But let me show you why I believe it's the greatest thing that could possibly happen. Wow, counterintuitive, counterintuitive. Well, there's a document that was written some time ago. And let's take a look at it. This document is called the Declaration of Independence. All right, what can we learn from this? Well, I've highlighted it here. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established, that eh, sounds like us, should not be changed for light or transient causes. I agree with that. I mean, you got to have stability, good foundation. And accordingly, all experience has shown that mankind, that's us, are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. Translation, people are more likely to suffer than change. So what is pain for? Pain is the way that we change. No pain, no gain, they say. Folks, I'm going to tell you something here. This is our moment. And when I say our moment, I mean DeFi's moment. This is it. You've been believing this stuff for a long time. You know, everybody's like, Richard Hart was right. No, you were right. It's going to get bad and painful but people are more likely to suffer than change. And so all of these things that we've been talking about, folks, we are going to onboard the world. What? How's that going to work? That's what we're going to be talking about today. It's a big, big, big deal. This is probably the most important stream I've done in like 500 streams I've done. I'm more engaged, more excited about what is actually beginning today. And so if you have the Twitters, you have anything, please share this out. This is an important thing for people to see. I would love to see as many people come in here. So if you've got it, will you share this out? Will you like it? Will you subscribe to the channel? This is very, very important. 
And I'm not just like, oh, Crypto Bar Heartbeat has a flair for the dramatic. No, no, no. This I'm serious about this one. And Rags is going to bring the heat. So let's get into the chat first. We'll say hello to you. We'll give it a little bit of time. Our friend Rags will come in. And we're going to be talking about how to onboard the world in the context of a run on the bank. Fractional reserve banking is failing. This is going to make the Great Depression look silly. Get ready, folks. It's coming. Thank you, Elizabeth Warren. You've actually created the Renaissance for us. But what we talked about is there's a revolution before it, and people are more likely to suffer than change. This is real wisdom, folks. I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke. This is serious stuff, and it's coming. And you know what? There are going to be people. It's going to be hard. But you are going to have the message. And we're going to talk about what that message is. Sam Kemp is number one. He's number one in my heart, too. Sam Kemp, man, you know, he, he came and he brought me a gift. You know, I showed him, Sam Kemp, this is that medicine bottle I was telling you about. And I've got up on my, uh, on my desk over here, I've got the gift of the Texas uh, State Quarters. So thank you so much, Sam Kemp. Taryn, here we go. DJ and Dougie Peach is in the house, so we can start. Thank you, sir. DJ and Dougie Peach. Opabamian, Babylon burning, and I'm catching the Friday stream. Is it too early for popcorn? It is never too early for popcorn. Bring it. It is 5 o'clock somewhere. There you go. Samantha, good morning to you. Glad that you're here. Thanks for all that you do. And David Lee. David Lee is the anchor. You know what I'm saying? He's the anchor, meaning he shows the love. What's this all about, folks? I'm going to weave you a tale and show you what the future is going to look like today. And you know what? David Lee's the anchor of that. What does he represent? Somebody that would go out of their way to travel seven and a half hours because he knows a brother, a fellow hexagon is struggling because his dad passed away. And he comes up and he sits. He comes to the funeral home and he comes to the funeral itself. Right? That's what I call love. And, and that's why community is so powerful. And that's the essence of it. The lowest common denominator is helping divide people's pain and multiply their joy. That's it. We're in this together. And we, that's the beauty of it. Okay. Community is at the core. And David Lee represents that with the love. Hexy Quinn's here. She does the same thing. What an amazing person. Hex Quinn, thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Hexagon, what's going on? Ah, oh, Godfather J6 is in the house again. Thank you for being here. Um, yeah, did you bring the gasoline for the bonfire? Uh, dang, heartbeat. I've been here a long time. No wrench. Hexagon. Okay, we're going to correct that. We got to correct that, don't we? I'll correct that. Sorry about that. That is bad. Rags would never give you one, but it's different here. Always, always. MT Corner. Good day, Crypto Heartbeat. Good to see you. Hexagons. David Lee with the fire, Sam Kemp, top of the morning on this St. Patty's Day. Is that St. Patty's Day, Mr. Lee? All right, Jack Handy. Good morning, friends. The Dish 22, good to see you folks. Looks like um, a week early. I was thinking maybe you were. Rich Liberation with the love, good to see you. Um, feeling a little Irish today. Tortoise Johnny, winning, absolutely winning. Dark parts, motorcycles. Dude, first time I've seen you in here. Greetings from Germany. I like that. Dark parts, motorcycles fantastic uh mr rock jockey good to see you immutables in the house thanks for all that you do immutable um the legendary david lee everyone facing realities here what is going on no dab this time just the fire in the hearts dish 22 greetings from germany um and this is fantastic let's see who else is here ego foundation god bless pain isn't that amazing it's it's hard right it's hard to think that we would embrace pain and understand what it does for us you know, these things must happen. And, you know, there are consequences for our actions. We make choices in life. And we've made choices. Fractional reserve banking. You know, and that's what a black swan is. This is a black swan, folks. This is it. Now, I think you could potentially have predict, predicted it, but this is the beginning. Silicon Valley Bank going under. Mark my words, USDT is going to unpeg. If you've got cash or crypto on centralized exchanges, stop watching this right now and go transfer it back into your wallet, into 
the non-custodial wallet of like MetaMask or whatever you've got, if you have money sitting on centralized exchanges, and it's been said forever, stop watching this. Okay, folks, the banks, everything is going to be run on the bank. And, and you can go other places for like the detail. And I think Rags is going to be talking about that. But if you can see these bonds failing, right, these long-term bonds, it's unbelievable what's happening right now. But we're going to talk about how this is our moment to onboard the world. Um, keep your eyes and heart on Jesus. There you go. There's some advice for you. Drix. What's up, Drix? Good to see you. Tort of Johnny in the house. Adam. What's going on? Good morning, Act the Emaciated. What's up? Good to see you. Quantifiably correct is here by the dip. Texan doing great. Man, I was just so, so like, I saw that chart. I'm like, when you see Ethereum and when you see Bitcoin down, you know, nine, eight, nine percent, seven, eight, nine percent. And then I was like, oh man, we must be going with them. And then I see us up 17%. And I'm like, okay, this is part of the story. Part of the story. I'm getting a text here. Let me make sure um let it rain wrenches let it rain wrenches all right um let's see Erto, good to see you roof dog tribal sounds what's up Forrest? you're the man thanks for all that you've been doing man it's amazing good morning crypto harpy let's get it hexagon ari's here will and lessick um robert keller john brasco good morning brother hexagon good to see you, an arc hexagon here all right here let's get into the content content. All right. How do you onboard the world? Well, if you missed, we were on Jim Rat Crypto. Brandon and I went to Jim Rat Crypto and we were on that channel. And I want to play something because there was a moment in that where Sam just was like, oh my gosh. Oh, oh my goodness. This is it. This is how you onboard the world. That's the inspiration for this. Okay. First, I've got to actually send the invite to Brandon so he can join us. I'm like, what an idiot I am. All right, here we go. Okay. So check this out. Let me share my screen. <laughs> share screen. All right, this is it. Check this out. And now, listening to what you're saying, that the communities behind these things you have effectively started the seed to build this tree of adoption, yeah. right? Because if you go go into these communities, it's not going to be it's not going to be like you know the television ad for most people. It's going to be hey, I know DRC, and he's had a conversation with me about X Y Z, like literally how I got in to crypto in this instance, right? So when you when you consider this, like you can tie into all these organizations. This is this could be the biggest cat, one of the biggest catalysts to like drive adoption, and you get this framework that you could call hacks or what Richard Hart's created around, you know, there's four or five different principles for security that need to be in place, the trustless yield, and you plop that on top of all these different endowments. And then that can spread roots yep. in terms of like bringing new people in. This is very, very And awesome. with the innovative piece to that, which HexMonkey, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, this is something that I haven't seen yet. Yep. Like I, I interview everyone, I do everything. And we're talking about a deflationary token with trustless yield that's immutable that you can scrape without penalty i mean I, i'm so proud of you guys like <laughs> wow like but, but here's the thing here's the thing that i think you like it gets even better and here's why i remember being i was interviewing richard i got a couple minutes with him at the end of the pulse con and i said to him i said will you talk to me about your vertically aligned ecosystem and the first thing he said was crypto is the only thing that will increase your freedom and sovereignty and help you get rich at the same time OK, so now think about this for a second, guys. We launched on Ethereum because we had to based on our agreement with the nonprofit. Here's the thing I believe Richard Hart is ahead of the game. He saw freedom of speech and freedom of movement. He's seeing what globalists and authoritarians are doing. I don't really care about Ethereum. I'm glad that we have it out and we, we honored our agreement. But the Pulse chain, when you have a founder like Richard Hart who's standing up against all of this stuff and understands it way before all of, of us did, and you build a vertically aligned ecosystem, in my opinion, when the CBDCs come, when the digital IDs come, and when the social credit scores come, there's going to be the Pulse chain. It's vertically aligned. You can do all your business there, and it's going to have a wallet. It's going to have you know privacy token. It's going to have a DEX. It's going to have a layer one. It's going to have stores of value, and it's going to have the users. But the question is this. When the government starts clamping down on things, and when they're shutting down fiat on-ramps and off-ramps, crypto is going to become mainstream 
do you want to have an alternative to the government CBDCs and all the regulatory and lockdown? Or do you want to be in a vertically aligned ecosystem where you have more freedom and sovereignty? Because here's the punchline. If you take the people of the Texas nationalist movement and you make them rich, guess what happens? Politics changes. What happens when you make the people that are in squalor in the Philippines and they put $100 in and maybe like Ballyat Brand, it goes up to 10,000 X? I don't know. But Bally Brand said $100 turns into a million. What if people that are in families in the Philippines have resources? We can affect poverty. We can affect politics. We can affect these things by decentralizing them. And in my opinion, we have no hope and no future without the pulse chain and Richard Hart's vision for a vertically aligned ecosystem. And that's really what's at stake. That's it, because it has to be an alternative to what the government's trying to control us with. You know, the mark of the beast, you can't buy or sell unless you have this mark. We are going to have the alternative and Richard Hart is leading the way. And folks, if you see it like I see it, this is way bigger than adoption. Wow. Sam, that was the moment Sam was like, hold on a second. This could be like the way you do adoption. So what are we talking about? Why is this so significant? Why is a vertically aligned ecosystem with a leader like Richard Hart so important? Folks, this is how we onboard the world. When you tokenize a community, you unlock abundance. When you tokenize communities, you unlock abundance, right? So you think about this, the innovators, right? The pioneers take the arrows. The settlers take the land. Richard Hart is an innovator, a pioneer. And what happened to him, just like the story says, he has the arrows in his back. He's got the arrows in his back to show that the pioneers take the arrows. And he proved it. He did it. He said he was going to build a better Bitcoin. And he did. And I find that in life, those people that are stepping out, true innovators like Richard Hart, they take all the arrows for us. It is real service, folks. We do owe him a lot, a lot, a lot of thanks. Richard Hart saw freedom of speech under attack. Folks, if you were somebody who sacrificed for the pulse chain and you were like, oh, yeah, this is funny, you know, that's yeah, like a sacrifice and yeah, that's for freedom of speech, man. Look at what's happening around us. Richard Hart saw this ahead of time. He saw this ahead of time. He knew this way back when he was double clicking an EXE file, folks. Censorship resistant. No counterparty risk, no middleman. He saw this. He knew this ahead of time. And for him to do these sacrifices, why do you think $1.6 billion was sacrificed? We are getting close to the launch of all this stuff. But this is it, folks. And I would say, is this just the genius of one man? I don't think so. I think this is what's called the transfer. This is the transfer. And what is the transfer if it is not a wholesale change in the financial system? Revelation 18 says that ba Babylon, commercial Babylon, will burn in an hour. And it uses this terminology of a city and of a harlot. And those who have essentially have basically slept with the whore and taken her money and gotten rich, right? Sounds like, uh, maybe that sounds a little bit like uh, fractional reserve banking. Sounds a little bit like uh, stimulus money. Sounds like printing $9 trillion during COVID, right? This is basically the leverage of the world. Ladies, liquor, leverage, sound familiar, right? Richard Hart, one crying out in the wilderness. I'm not saying it's a spiritual salvation. What I am saying is it is happening right now. And Richard Hart saw it ahead of time. And what is this vertically aligned ecosystem? And how do you onboard the world? You care about people. You care about people and you give them hope. So let's take a look. What did the pioneer do? What did the pioneer Richard Hart do? He created a better Bitcoin. He told a story and a group of people prop, you know, popped up. Crypto coffee, Matt, another Matt, RG3. Hexo, the hexologist, Maddie, Maddie Allen. Hmm. There's so many of them. Briz, he's in the chat, Briz, first meet up. There's so many people who saw this stuff. And what did they hear? 
one crying out in the wilderness, right? Right. Just what, what, what does it take? What does it take to be a pioneer an innovator? You know, you think about this idea of, you know, fix the money, fix the world. I don't believe that it fixes it ultimately because what it reflects upon is there is something greater and that is the corruption of the human heart, right? You don't fix that stuff with crypto. And that's why the coins are in a medicine bottle of Xanax because men create solutions that are temporary, right? Money is just a tool. The corruption in your heart has to be dealt with. It needs to be dealt with in all of us. But here's the thing. We covered ourselves with fig leaves, but what did God say before he kicked us out? He said, no, nope, those will not do. I will provide for you, even though I'm kicking you out and telling you to rule this earth and have dominion over it. And he killed animals and shed innocent blood, and he covered them. Folks, there's always provision with the vision. And there, it comes a time when you have to be in severe pain to go, well, maybe we do need to be independent. Maybe we do need a different financial system. Maybe we need trustless yield. Maybe we need to find something that isn't controlled by a bunch of absolute freaking maniacs. Maybe we need to take these things out of people's hands. Think about what the founders of America said. They saw King George. They saw this colonialism. They saw this, what had birthed this. And they're like, hold on a second. This centralization of power, which is most manifest in the monarchy, is a display. And they said, no, we need to decentralize it. And here's what's amazing, folks. This idea is not a new one but it's a beautiful one and we're doing it through technology. But here's the thing, folks, tokenizing communities is about building digital nations. And I don't mean nations in the same way you might think. And this is, you know, a hat tip to Ralph Powell, this social construct, this agreement, this, what do we call community is how we onboard the world. That's it. We're tokenizing communities. Are we going to onboard the world? Like, Rags and I, no, we're going to contribute to it because all we can do, because the vision that I was given is to unlock global generosity by giving. So what am I, am I going to do? I'm going to give all my time, energy, effort to give contracts with trustless yield that are DeFi with no admin keys, censorship resistant, no middlemen to communities of people who are suffering. If you have ears to hear, you know what I'm saying. Because the suffering is about to begin big time. Hope. What is the hope? Where there is vision, there is provision. This is the greatest possible moment for us because pain's the only thing people respond to. Babylon is burning. This entire banking system is going to fail. And here's the thing. You know the 10,000 Bitcoin number? Oh, yeah. Richard Hart was right again, at least 10,000, maybe less. But think about this. What is a phoenix, a phoenix that rises from the ashes? There has to be a fire. There has to be embers. There has to be ashes to rise out of. But here's the thing. Do you see that you heard this call ahead of time? that you understood this? You weren't wrecked by FTX and Celsius? And you realize, hold on a second. This decentralization is just like in the Federalist Papers, folks. This is the same thing. It's different technology. They didn't have Web3. But here's the coolest thing that's about to happen. The humanity of people across the world through communication technologies, as well as the network effect that comes from money, in this case crypto, being a communication network. We have an opportunity to serve people and give to them something that unlocks gold in their hearts. Because where is the value? All of this stuff is a proxy for your private property, which comes out of your creative ability and your own heart. It just represents you. You put time, energy, effort into this, right? We all want passive income, but most people are using their God-given gifts of creative ability, the sweat of their brow, and you call it something. It's, it's just a proxy. That's all it is. I don't care if it's a coin of gold. It's not any different. It's a story, but it's a story of you. 
That's why inflation is theft because it's stealing your private property from you systematically. It's like, well, you can't point to who's doing it and you can't hold anybody accountable, but the money's gone because the prices are higher. Babylon has to burn in an hour. People are going to be wrecked. And what grows out of this? The shoots that Richard Hart saw at the beginning. And it's not just Richard Hart. And I'm not saying, well, he is like the, the God. No, he saw what was coming ahead of time. And so did you because you listened to this. And you realize DeFi is crypto. Crypto is not CFI. It is not centralized. And here's what's interesting about this, folks. It's going to get painful in the beginning because you know what's going to happen is that they're going to try to clamp down on every possible way to get to fiat because fiat's going to zero. And guess what we're going to end up doing? We're going to be trading chickens and goats. What are our chickens and goats? Hex, Texan, the things where we have accumulated value, centers of trust, because you're putting a piece of yourself. You're taking a proxy of your labor. A piece of you goes into that contract. And why does it go there than somewhere else? Because you have at least a little bit more trust that isn't going to change the rules and pull the rug. This is a miracle, folks. And it's coming to pass today. And I'm so excited about it. So how do you onboard the world? By bringing gifts to communities that are in pain. The first one is the Texas Nationalist Movement. That's the beginning of it, right? Hey, guess what's going to happen, folks? We're going to see Texas become independent. In this pain, people will say we have to have an alternative. There's going to be an alternative political system. But what ends up happening when the people, the regular people who care about these things have resources? We will see a decoupling. I don't know how long it's going to take, but we're going to see a decoupling of DeFi crypto, right? Immutable, no admin keys, censorship resistant, the real crypto that we know, decouple from this whole, it's going to, all of this other stuff's going to fall off the table. So when I woke up, it was like a premonition. I looked at the chart of Texan and I went, what? Everything around us is failing. It's like a life raft, folks. DeFi. And I don't, I don't even want to promote Texan. I'll be honest with you. I don't even want to talk about Texan. I want to talk about DeFi because we need more and more communities of people who take ownership in their own. When you give this proxy, when you put yourself out there and you sweat from your brow and your heart rate goes up and you dig a ditch or drive a truck, they give you a little ticket, a little token, and it's a piece of you. And it's about how you were designed and created because you create value. Richard says it. I say it all the time. I quote him. If you want a picture of an elephant, you can draw one. You're like, well, what does that mean? You can draw one. That is what makes you different than the animals. You can draw one. And somebody might say, hey, make that an NFT and I'll buy it for a million dollars. And they'll be stupid. But that's the point. If you understand how all this stuff works, and that's what I'm trying to tell you, you are the value. Crypto isn't the value. You are the value. Your heart is where the gold is. The gold isn't in the ground. This is a revolution, my friends. Babylon, commercial Babylon, it's a representation of a harlot. It is a representation of those who have literally whored themselves out and drank from this well and said, oh, free money, free money, free money, fractional reserve banking. And the banks are like, oh, yeah, we can do this 10 to 1. Oh, yeah, yeah, we don't have to have much on deposit. Oh, the FTIC isn't going to save you, folks. There ain't enough. This is going to be such a shock to the system of the world because the banks are going to fail. I think USDT will depeg. And of course, you're like doom and gloom. No, 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 folks. No, 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 no. This is our time. Because people won't listen. Remember 9-11? Remember when the towers fell and everybody rushed into churches? Why do you think they rushed into churches? Because... They were hurting. 
people are going to be looking around. They're going to be like staring like zombies. People aren't going to have food. And this is a part of the plan to tip this thing over. Klaus Schwab, the people that are aligned with evil forces, those that want to control, they're excited today too. Ha ha. We've wanted to take down all of these, these supply chains. We've wanted to take down all of this fossil fuel. We've wanted to take down and push the system over so that we can rebuild utopia in our image. It's the new Tower of Babel, folks, and we won't go for it. We have to have an alternative. But if God is with us, who could be against us? So what do we do? We tokenize communities. Empty Corner, Crypto Harpy, when you get a moment, could you say a prayer for my friend, 11-year-old son who is in the ICU this day from a near-fatal diabetic episode? He is also learning crypto. I wish I could help more. Folks, in all of this passion, in all of this, this is a picture of the whole thing wrapped up in one super chat. Empty Corner, thanks for the 10 bucks. Folks, stop where you are right now. I'm going to pray for... See, here's the thing, folks, and I just want you to see this. This is empty corner one. Thank you for allowing us to come alongside of you. Two, do you believe in the power of prayer? I do. I've seen miracle upon miracle. And folks, when someone like this is in need in our community, this is what David Lee came and did, shared love. This is the value, not the coin, not the token, not the logo, you and what you give and your intention, you may not be someone like, I don't pray. Okay, that's fine. But does your heart break for this story? An 11 year old, my son is 11 years old. If my son was in ICU, I would be bawling my eyes out, crying out to you to ask you to please pray for my son. So I'm going to imagine this 11 year old son is my son. I have diabetes, folks. I have my insulin right here. I know what happens when you go low and you go into a coma. All right, we're going to pray. If you don't like to pray, you can leave the stream. Father in heaven, we are so desperate for your miraculous work and your provision. And we know that you can be trusted. And we pray for this young boy who's 11, just like my own son. An empty corner for lifting him up. And Lord, we bring everything that we have, which is nothing. You have everything and we literally cry out to you for, for salvation of this boy's life who's learning crypto. And Lord, I know that in your power, not in ours, we petition you on behalf of this boy. And we show love to Empty Coiner and to the story. You know all of these things in advance. And we just pray for your supernatural power of healing. And in this community of people, who are like, what are we praying about? What's this for? That your name would be known. Because all of these things, of these pain and these challenges, is where we rally around each other, where the value is. And the value has been placed in our hearts by you, because you created us. We're not an accident. And so I lift up this boy, 11-year-old boy, don't know his name. I imagine him as my own son in ICU, intensive care, and anyone that has any sense of heart, whether you pray or not, are th imagining this boy in ICU and are saying, everything in us asks for a miracle. And we know that you are capable of doing those because we've seen them before. And we know that you are mighty and powerful and we are frail. And so we lift up this boy and we just ask for your healing. And we, we also pray for an amazing, amazing report. And we believe for healing. But Lord, thank you so much for Empty Coiner who would come out on this stream and share this information with us, allowing us to come alongside, to divide pain and multiply joy. Empty Coiner, I cannot thank you enough. We just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, I did not know that was coming. I want to say to you, many people are like, hey, I, I don't believe that stuff. That's okay. The great pastor, Scott Jankowski, said, it's not my job to convince you that God exists. He will do it all on his own. And so I don't ask anyone to believe what I believe. I just testify to the truth that there's power. And I've seen it, and I continue to see it. And I'm going to tell you what, if you've got a son who's 11 years old and he's in ICU, boy, you'll do anything.
You'll hop on one leg on Leap Year Wednesday. You will do whatever it takes to turn yourself inside out. And that is the problem, but also the joy of pain. And that's what it does, right? We come alongside of each other and we literally go, I got nothing. You've got everything. And you don't realize this if you're young. I thought I was invincible, right? When Lambo, I thought I could do it all until I couldn't. And when you're a parent of an 11-year-old boy who's in ICU, you don't know what to do. You're just like, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I mean, you're, you're numb. You're stunned. You're just like, please help. Empty Corner, thanks for sharing that. I really appreciate it a lot. And it illustrates the entire point of this whole stream. Tokenizing communities, unified people where trust is built. And where is trust built from? Serving people. Mixed Script Arts says, just started watching Hope All as well, facing reality with the prayers. Barry Crump, hi Matt, I just want to say a big thank you for your very generous Easter egg from your book, Unlocking Generosity, a guide to DeFi. Apologies for the late reply. I don't check my wallet all that often. Dude, you're, you're letting the cat out of the bag. Folks, we've got a free book. It's in the description. You can get it and print it out. And if you're an old man like Crypto Heartbeat and you need readers, you can write in the margins of that thing. Ty Bull, what's going on? Totus Johnny, Matt got me on fire right now. I'm ready to run through a wall. Folks, it's just the sign of the times. We didn't create this stuff. And here's the thing that's so different. Richard wants the glory. And I've said this so many times. He will never receive the glory that he wants because that's not how the system is designed. The system isn't designed for you to be God. The system is designed for you to be an agent. And I think what is so incredible about this with Richard going into this kind of humble phase that I hope is truly genuine, and I think it is, is that he, in this process of trying to gain the whole world, He's going to discover that something greater has been in this story all along. And that's you and me and our community and the people that care and come alongside. And Empty Coiner just gave us the perfect example of that. That's where the value is. I'm telling you, when your son's in ICU, crypto don't, don't mean jack. The Dish 22, what's up? Magnus is here, Rich Liberation, Texan. What's up, Mobius? This is an event that will see a white elephant. <laughs> Look, it is special meaning. There you go. Let's set the captives free. Um, yeah, it's what Richard's doing. Absolutely. And folks, we're a part of that. And it's not just Richard. We give him, obviously, we're like, hey, tip of the spear, right? He's leading the way. He has taken all the arrows. He has fought the dragon. But we're the settlers, and we get to take the land, and that's what's happening right now. Magnus with the prayers. Taurus Johnny with the prayers. David Lee with the prayers. Magnus with the love, facing reality with the prayers, the dish praying, wow, Hexiquin with the love, rich liberation, praying for your friend, son, and healing in God's will. God bless, liberty or death. We are unified in our desire, in our hearts, regardless of what we believe, to come alongside Empty Coiner and that boy. How many people in this world are struggling right now? So many, and so many more will. We are the hope, folks. We are the hope. What will attract people? And it's the story I told about these coins in this medicine bottle of Xanax. Man creates things to anesthetize himself. We have anxiety beyond anxiety. And I know what it's like. Benzos, folks. Jordan Peterson understands benzos really well, too. Man creates a thing that he thinks will bring him peace. I'm so out of control. Take this pill. What's inside of this when I found it in this old house? State quarters. And what it represents, folks, is the fact that we create things, tools, and those tools get used, whether it's streaming, whether it's a sword, a plow, whatever it may be. We have to recognize that money is just a tool. But money is also attractional why would there be a transfer right now? Why would Babylon burn? Why would it be spoken in Revelation 18? Why would we be in this situation, in community together, praying for empty coiners, friend's son? Why would we be here at this moment today? If not for the fact that it was planned out in advance. 
for Richard, for you, for me. This isn't about one person getting the glory. It's about all the people coming together to serve one another. That's the key to this whole thing. Seek first the kingdom, and all these things will be added unto you. So you think about others in addition to yourself. doesn't mean that you're a martyr. It means that you're thinking about others in addition to yourself, and that's where the benefit is, right? Don't you want somebody watching out for you? Absolutely. Then watch out for someone else. And in this process, we're one beggar helping another beggar find food. So how do you onboard the world? You bring gifts to people who are struggling. I don't care what it is. You bring gifts and you give to those in need. I hope that our level of giving is on nation size. But guess what? It's no more important than you seeing a need in your community and helping someone. It's no different. And in my opinion, God doesn't judge it differently. Everyone is just created for a role. What is your role? You fought the lion and the bear. You've been prepared all your life for this stuff. What is your role? What happens when you have a ridiculous amount of money because you saw DeFi ahead of time and you understood what the times were? And then March 10th of 2023, the bank run begins and Babylon burns and falls and the black swan is here and it all falls off the table and DeFi with trustless yield no middlemen, censorship resistant. What happens when that decouples? People are addicted to yield. You don't have to go to them. They will come to you. The need and the sorrow and the pain that comes out of this will be self-evident, and you will have an answer. Because the future isn't about, let's transfer our crypto into fiat. That's not the answer. Guess what's going to end up happening? This representation of you that you put into this immutable contract called Hex is you. It's just a representation of your labor, which is your private property. We're amassing value together. And the system what Richard put together, which is absolutely genius, which we learned from as well, DeFi crypto with trustless yield will be the only place that you can get yield. Now, that's a pretty big statement. You're like, oh, well, pretty confident in this. And I'm not confident just because, oh, yeah, I'm just a smart guy. I'm an idiot. But I see the nature of these things, and we've been designed for a time such as this. But here's what it is. It's just an excuse to care for people. It's just an excuse to help. What is it having a lot of money? What? You wear one pair of pants, you can drive one car at a time. Great. Like, get it out of your damn system. right? Go buy a bunch of shit and feel good about it. Pardon my French. Like, seriously, like, get it out of your system, right? Like, let's go buy all the stuff that you need or that you thought you needed or that you want, and let's get it out of your system. And now let's go and do something that's meaningful, and let's have significance rather than chasing after all this success, which is social signaling to other people that you're better than them, but actually it's your insecurity because you are afraid of your own damn shadow. We as an organization and a group, which is now going to be called Infinite Development, is a software, Web3 software development firm. And we're getting serious and getting full time. And we are tokenizing communities. And we are seeking out and we have some unbelievable contacts with some massive audiences to come. And so we shared this last time about infinite development and that we are raising capital to go and get really, really serious about some things. I'm going to show you with what we're going to be getting serious about. We are creating Freedom Swap, which is a DEX on Ethereum, a decentralized exchange, which is a fork of uh, Uniswap v3. This will come out in the summer, and it's going to have a uh, incentive token. So essentially, what what Pulse X is doing in the Pulse chain, we're going to do on Ethereum. The tokenomics of this, the tokenomics of this are unbelievable. This is how you onboard the world. You give them the gift of a contract with Trustless Shield that's no admin keys. We've done it once now. Did it in Texas, right? Texan token. And then we're doing it in the Philippines with Ophir. 
And that audience of 3,000 churches, plus all those who care about people in poverty across the world, are going to see this, and that story might resonate with them. It doesn't have to be a super large group of people, and it can unlock value for the people in the Philippines and for anybody who's a part of the project. Right now, there's a donation phase. You can go to OphirCrypto.com and learn more. Do your own research, okay? We gave the gift, like a franchise model, we've given the gift of our uh, contract that has been security audited to that audience, that group. That's how we give. So as a group, infinite development, full-time people, we're doing two things. We're tokenizing communities, and then we're providing incentive to tie them all together. And you have to do that with the deck. So it's like an ecosystem of freedom and sovereignty. It's called Freedom Swap. And it has really interesting characteristics. It's a DEX with constant buy pressure. Sounds familiar? Yes. Because what happens is 100% of the fees go to the LPs, and then the protocol fee goes to buy and burn Unifier. How do you get Unifier? Well, you, we want to promote you having long stakes. So you, if you have long stakes in Hex, you have long stakes in Texan, you have long stakes in Ophir, every 30 days you can come back and you can claim, based on your amount of your principal stake that has that long duration, and you can get Unifier token. And that Unifier token, every 30 days you get more, you get more. You got to come back. If you forget to come back, Sorry, you missed that period of time. But what's amazing about this is it not only drives people to lock up value, which helps obviously prop up the price, but it also provides them something that they can sell that's not the underlying base asset of their community. And for us as infinite development, it differentiates ourselves when we're talking to a group that has 6 million users. The Texas Nationalist Movement's got 444,000. This other group we're talking to has 6 million. There's only like 350,000 wallets in, in, uh, in Hex, and there's at least two per one, so it's about 150,000 people. Billions of, of value. Look at the, the DEX. I mean, look at, um, look at the value. Look at the liquidity in Hex. You know what it's done for people. It's changed their lives. So what are we doing? We're advocating for other communities, and we're saying, hey, as Babylon burns and this stuff falls off the table, there's an alternative. And ultimately, this alternative isn't Ethereum. This alternative is not these tokens. It's on the pulse chain. Because here's the thing. They're going to do everything they can. You saw this. The new case, right? Suing KuCoin. They said Ethereum is a security. The U.S. is going after all this stuff. It's a part of the whole plan. But folks, they cannot. This is whack-a-mole on steroids. You cannot stop this. The cat is out of the bag. You cannot stop it. Why? Because it's a representation of you. Here's the thing. I'd be happy to receive Hex. I'd be happy to receive Texan. Here's the thing. What's going to pop up in this if they try to abolish, you know, going to fiat and all that and their fiat's dying? You know what's going to happen is we're just going to trade the things that we've already got that have value in them. That's what we're going to do. So the marketplaces are going to come about and there's going to be a marketplace for all of these tokens. And maybe you literally say, hey, at the beginning, we might say, well, here's the thing that I'll offer as a product or service to anybody who wants it, and I'll accept these DeFi crypto products, right? Because that's where this ultimately leads. Back in the 17 and 18, eh, 16 and 1700s, right? Does that sound right? In London, there wasn't a lot of currency. And so individual businesses created traders' tokens. And traders' tokens were a representation of two things. One, credit and value. They could be traded. Even some employees got paid in these traders' tokens. But they were also promotional. Sound familiar? Yeah. Tokens that were used for promotion and for trading within their community. It's happened many times. I mean, at the end of the day, value is perceived... By parties, if you need eggs, right, and I've got milk, we're going to trade. I got more milk than I can drink, and you got more eggs than you can eat. Hey, this is how it has always worked. Value is perceived by parties. And so what we've done that is so unique, and thanks to Richard Hart, thanks to DeFi, thanks to Bitcoin, thanks to Satoshi, thanks to Tim May and Crypto Anarchy, we actually have a shot. And so as Babylon burns and all this stuff fails, we have an alternative, and that alternative is our love for one another in community as we contribute a proxy for our labor, which is actually the gold out of your heart. 
Hey, that's interesting. Richard Hart. Richard, meaning strong in rule and heart. He's taken the arrows, folks, so you can take the land. It's time. It's happening right now. It's going to be tough and people are going to look to you. The future phoenix that rises from the ashes is DeFi. Why? Because no centralized players can control it. It's controlled by no one. Censorship resistant, no middlemen, no counterparty risk, no admin keys. They're gifts that are given. It's amazing. It's a miracle. And it becomes obvious now, right? When things literally go crazy and they fall apart. But I, I really believe, you know, almost like Michael Burry, if you saw the movie, The Big Short, right? He knew this was happening. And people were like, yeah, no way. And he's losing money, losing money, losing money. And then he realized that this thing is going to crumble under its own weight. And we've kind of known, well, yeah, that's going to happen at some point. It's happening because the banks, right? Because here's the thing. You know, you and I can do, you know, products and ser uh, services and help someone because that's all that really exists. But they've gotten so leveraged with fractional reserve banking that they can't cover it all. They cannot cover it all. So literally, the notes are being called, if you will, and the banks are failing. When the banks fail, what do you got? That's fiat going to zero. So what do you have in all of this? Well, we've got each other in community. And that's really important that we got people who care about us. It's going to be tough. But I'm going to tell you right now, folks, you can't have this renaissance that we all want without the revolution. And the revolution starts with pain, massive amounts of pain. So what is the future for us and infinite development and me and rags and our whole team of people is we're getting serious about tokenizing communities because we believe that at the bottom is when you build and guess what? You know, I might have gone two weeks ago and said, hey, we'd like to tokenize communities and give you the gift of this and help you with education and show you how you can unlock value in your hearts. And they go, eh, we don't need that. I've got my fiat. I've got my stuff. Oh, your fiat's gone. Oh, your fiat's gone. Oh, yeah. You know how you were talking to us the other day about that gift you wanted to give us? Hmm. So now you're interested. Yep. That's how the system works. So, folks, this is huge. How do you onboard the world? You give gifts to those who are in need. You unlock abundance for people. You don't hoard it. You don't centralize it. You give away what you want to receive. Give away what you want to receive. Give away what you want to receive. The beauty of these truths is that they work in your home and they work on the globe or the flat thing right? They work everywhere because they're true. When empty coiner said, Hey, my friend's son, 11 year old, diabetic coma, near death, pray, please pray. Give away what you want to receive because you may find that your 11 year old son needs some prayer one day too. So Freedom Swap Dex is really this way in which we're saying, all right, all of these communities are going to have a place. All these, you know, no coiners that we're bringing into this community will have a place to trade. And when they do trade there, whatever it may be, they might be trading their SHIB, their Shiba Anu, or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be these tokens. But every single trade, right, that protocol fee will go and buy and burn through a public call that we don't have control of, and we don't receive any benefit from the Dex, zero goes to buy and burn this token called Unifier. It unifies all of these communities together, and it differentiates us when we're talking to new communities that have 6 million people in them. So why did Sam Stolt got so excited and go, I've got goosebumps? Because he saw what we saw long ago. That if you want to be a part of changing the very nature of things, you need to give, not take. But here's the thing. You receive when you give. Pressed down, overflowing, an abundance. It multiplies itself. Let go to receive. So here's the thing. Look for every possible opportunity that you can care for people. And it's not just crypto, folks. It's in every possible situation. It's praying for empty coiner's friend, son. It's it's everything, right? It's it's 
it's David Lee coming to my dad's funeral. It's, it's, it's a good word. It's a high five. It's a, Hey, you can do it. It's going to be okay. It's, Hey, I've gone through this addiction. I can help you. It's any of those things. Community is actually at the core because you're contributing a portion of yourself. It's just a representation of you and your private property because the only things that matter in this world are products and services. And those are the product of the creative force that is a gift that the animals don't have. You are not an accident. You are not a monkey. You didn't crawl out of ooze and turn into a newt and then a chimpanzee. And then you became somebody that can draw an elephant or, or code in Python. That's not how it works, folks. And I'm telling you this right now. Why? Because I got evidence upon evidence and miracle upon miracle that testifies that that is not true. And you have value. And we together in community are going to have to love and serve people. And guess what will happen? We're one beggar helping another beggar find food. We found food. It's called DeFi. And it's called Trustless Yield. And that's a place in which we can eat from the transfer we are going our own way. We are decoupling ourselves from the legacy financial system. This is the dream. This is the dream, but it's going to get really, really bad before it gets good. And it's coming and it started today. It's a big deal. But the question you're really asking yourself is, where the heck is Rags? And that's the question I've got for him as well. So let's see if he's said anything to me like, hey, man, hey, dude, I'll be there in about 15 minutes. Oh, dude, that was a long time ago. So let's make sure he's got the uh, let's make sure he's got this link because I I need to bring him in because he's got some stuff to share with you. I give you all of this stuff like, hey, look what time it is, and he's going to tell you exactly what second it is. Um, let's go. All right, back into the chat, and then we'll talk to Rags as he comes in. Thanks for being here, folks. I told you this was going to be epic. I had no idea Empty Coiner would come here. I had no idea that this would illustrate this thing so clearly. But I just want to say to you, thank you for being a part of this community. One thing that's unique about this community of people is, I mean, if you're a DGen, you're done. You've been, you're gone long ago. If you're somebody, and I don't mean DGen Dougie Peach, but if you're somebody who's not serious, if you're not someone who's mature, this is just it's silliness to you, right? It's silliness to those who are perishing, right? But as they perish, they're going to be looking to you because you have an answer for them. Folks, he's not only the CEO, he's the CFO, he's the CTO, he's the CMO. He's the mayor of Sassy City. He is the commander of couch cushion maintenance. In the islands, he's known as King Kamea. He's not internationally known, but he's been known to rock the microphone. He is the professor of potent pontification. Folks, Brandon from Rags to Riches. Dude, what's up, man? Dude, I am en fuego like behind me over mm. there. You got some blue flames back there, man. Dude, man, what is going on? Dude, what's going on in the world, man? I wake yeah. up and everything's like, <laughs> it's just mixed emotions, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the mayor. When mayor of Sassy City. There we go. There oh, we go. Sammy. Sam Max I monkey with it. Um, dude, have you been listening to any of this stuff? I uh, so I was listening to the beginning. Okay. Uh, but I didn't listen to a, a big chunk of it. But I'm looking That's, forward to rewinding. No, no, it's it, it's a special one. Empty Coiners got a friend's son who's 11 years old, who is in ICU from a diabetic coma. Oh. Boy, and I know about that really, really well. You go so low that you just, and so he literally came in, did a $10 super chat and just asked for us to pray. Yeah. And, and just, you know, it was an illustration. I had no idea this was going to happen, but this whole story around what time is it? Where are we? How do we onboard the world? Why is DeFi important? Why is when the banks completely melt down, are people going to be struggling and looking for hope? And then he puts this in here and it's like, like an exclamation point on the whole value of community. And, you know, and then I shared, of course, all of the stuff about how do you tokenize communities and everything. So very, very special. But I wanted you, and we talked about this ahead of time, I want you to talk about and share your screen and all that stuff. And will you break down, you know, the, the brass tacks of all this stuff, folks, the practical stuff is this Silicon Valley Bank is kind of this indicator, right? Um, is that the banks are failing 
because they bought these long-term T-bills, right? They should have bought the short ones. They bought the long ones. And this, there's a huge, huge liquidity issue. But ultimately, they do not have the reserves when people lose faith in the system. And there's a run on the bank. And Elizabeth Warren is the one who kicked it all off. Do you mind looking at the charts and giving us your opinion, Rags? Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, one of the first things that I want to take a look at here, and let me pull this up. Sorry X, in X, advance. X Monkey, I, that is one of the greatest comments ever right there. Rags is busy running on the banks. Dude, well, <laughs> you know what you know what happened? What's interesting is also, are, are you familiar with, with Silvergate and what's happened yeah. with that? Yeah. That's like another example, right? <sighs> yeah. Um, a crypto friendly bank that's had an absolute meltdown. Now, one of the things, the first thing that popped into my head when I saw Silver Bank slipping under was it took me back to, and, and we'll, we'll kind of get into this. Do you remember when the United States decided and, and NATO decided to sanction Russia yeah. and sanction all the oil, all the mm -hmm. natural gas that was flowing into, into Europe? Yep. <laughs> There's about 12 major banks there in Europe, and one of those major banks, Credit Suisse, decided that they were going to start loaning money to businesses who wanted to pull uh, fossil fuels out of the ground. Because mm -hmm. logically thinking, okay, if, if there's not anything coming in that we need to go find, we need to credit, we need to fund these people to help relieve this, this problem, this supply crisis. Yep. <laughs> so what happened? Those 12 banks ganged up on Credit Suisse. And if you guys saw about a month and a half ago or two months ago, Credit Suisse is almost all gone at this point, right? So they like to gang up. This is how this works. This is how this works in the in the West, centralized banking mixed with a nice little tinge of, of Marxism and socialism and redistributing yeah, and policy. Yeah, yeah green, green, all of that. They're saying we will let people die. We will let the system fail as long as we can control power. And we're going to use the lie and the guise of green initiatives to, to hold that. Because basically, if you loan to those people, what they're saying is you're murdering people on the planet in the future. Yeah, that's what they're trying to. That, that's the, the false equivalency there. So, it's a straw man. It's a straw man that's been set up. And here's the thing, folks. This goes right back to the Great Reset. The, you know, supply chain stuff, fossil fuels, the banking, all of this stuff is literally and people are looking for any way they can decouple themselves from the dollar system and certainly from fractional reserve banking. And that's what we're going to see. And, and keep going, right? I, it just it's amazing. Yeah. So you kind of look at what's happening right now. So back in like late September of 2022, the one month Treasury bills were yielding more than 2.5%. So what you do, you go and you can buy these, you can buy these treasury bills or, or they buy them and you can receive some sort of return on that. The dumb math here is you take that $12 billion of deposits, you buy about $12 billion worth of bills and you get paid about $300 million a year in interest. You pay your $123 million of, of non-interest expense, your $0 of interest expense, and you have $177 million left over. And your assets should be super safe and super liquid. But the problem is we have a massive economic downturn. It's very difficult to service all of this debt. And I said this probably, you might remember about two or three months ago, I said, if this all fails, it's going to be, it's going to have an issue in the debt liquidity markets that yeah. the liquidity in the debt markets are what's going to cause this thing to absolutely tank. And when you're underwater for so long, regardless of the what, what the White House says, they can't they can't lie when it comes to the numbers. You can hear what's coming out of their mouth. You don't pay attention to it, right? Except to understand the story they're trying to paint for you. But then you look at the math. This is just unsustainable. I said that for a long time. What I said was they have to service all of this debt. So when interest rates go up. The interest rates on the, on, on the debt that the United States has also goes up and yep. they can't do it forever. Six months, fine. Seven, eight months, fine. 12 months, getting weird. More than 12 months, getting really, really bad. Something's going to break. So what's the problem now? They're getting to the point where things are breaking. It's not good. 
Okay, Janet Yellen, you know, the debt ceiling up to 31 trillion now. The problem is inflation is not under control, but they need to decrease interest rates. Yep. Because they can't service that debt any longer. Yep. So something's got to break. The problem with this system is they're going to force they're going to break the backs of the American people before they break their system. Yep. That's what's wrong with all of this. They are going to break us. They're going to break everybody in this room. They're going to destroy the economy. They will hike rates as far as they have to, to keep control of this broken ass system that they have. And that's yep. what we're seeing right now. Well, and think about this, folks. Listen to what Rags is saying. And he's been saying this for a long time. And I think it's actually, it's so redemptive that you've been telling us this whole time. And people are like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's happening today, folks. And I think the incredible thing about this is we are in DeFi. And this is the question I've got for you, Brandon. Mm -hmm. DeFi, right? No centralized parties. We're putting in our economic energy. Well, guess what? You put your economic energy into this piece of paper. And what happened is this piece of paper, it's, uh, it's, that it's worth this much or it's worth this much now, right? Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening now is that, hold on, is there an alternative where I can put in the whole representation of my labor and I know that it's secure and maybe somebody will pay me extra on that and it doesn't change? I believe that DeFi, true DeFi with trustless yield is going to be, you know, we think about this next, well, hey, I'd like to have a bull run. It'd be nice to have a bull run. Folks, when this stuff gets worked out and when we see that the only place in the world to get yield is in DeFi crypto, real crypto, like hold on to your hats. This is the wholesale change in the system. And what happens when poor people have money? What happens when independent people in Texas have money? Politics changes. Poverty changes. This is actually the pain that is needed for people to actually change. And you know what? It's, it's going to suck. Like big time. People are going to die. People are going to die over this. But this is the think about this is good and evil. Those that are on the side of evil, what do they want? Centralized. They, they, they say, hey, we'll just make you pay for it. We'll try to protect our system. We'll bail it out. Right. Trying to hold on to this. But what is Klaus Schwab and all these people that are basically they're worshiping at the altar of climate change? It's like this is the moment we've wanted, because then we can literally now say, look at all the people that are crying. Look at all the people that are dying. You need to accept our solution. And our solution is a CBDC. And it's with our wallet and a social credit score and a digital ID. And then we, the smart ones, can rebuild this in our own image. And the Tower of Babel goes up. We are the alternative. This is the transfer. Richard Hart is building the vertically aligned ecosystem that is provision for us. It is an alternative system. And you said it so many dang times. We have to provide people an alternative. Yeah. Two things here, right? First thing. <laughs> Matt, how many Hershey bars could you have purchased in 1913 with $1? I mean, it's got to be a lot, man. 26. Oh, my gosh. How many Hershey bars can you purchase today with $1? I probably can't get one. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, what they have, they've got an advantage. Government is kind of immortal in a way, right? Government doesn't just die and all the ideas and stuff goes with it. Yeah. Government and bureaucracy is like um it's kind of like in a way like a virus, maybe parasitical. It keeps growing and growing and growing, but also the knowledge and everything with that goes with it. Generations die off and they forget. Okay. And they don't remember things and they don't start looking into the past until things get bad. So they've been able to do this over a very long time frame because nobody has that perspective of history because everybody thinks history begins when they're born. Yeah. <laughs> so Second thing I want to point out here, Fed chair, okay, he was quoted as saying this the other day, Matt, blew my mind, all right? Um, somebody basically said, you know, can you comment on cryptocurrency? Jerome Powell, the head guy, he says, I've never understood the valuation of those. Now, wait for it. They don't have any intrinsic value, but nonetheless, they trade for a positive number. Mm. Think about... This man, think about the office that he occupies, okay? And I'm going to say office because he was appointed. He's appointed to this, and he has no clue that the system that he is operating in is fake. Now, I have a weekly bath, okay? And that was this morning. I was taking a cold bath this morning. 
<laughs> and I'm sitting there staring at the wall and I'm like, well, let me think about this uh, objectively, Brandon. If you have somebody like Jerome Powell, who has devoted his entire life to this fake imaginary horrible system, and he's getting paid enormous amounts of money, and he's the face of the scam, he's going to compartmentalize the truth and push it as far away from him as possible because he's benefited so much from the lie. And that's what human behavior is in general. He doesn't understand what we understand at a very basic value or a very basic level here, which is just like you said, if we have agreement that something has value, the sky's the limit. But also what's cool is our system is so much more simple, yep. so much more predictable and, and so much more trustworthy, which is what's amazing about DeFi. That's why money's going to be pouring into it. Yep. Yeah. DeFi is going to be, well, and that's the thing, right? The centralized parties have become untrustworthy. FTX, obviously all of these things, but it's happened so many times before. If you look back into history, how empires fall is they do not pay back their sovereign debt. That's it. People literally spend themselves out of existence. Then they fight wars. Oh, that sounds familiar. And then they try to take somebody else's stuff and rewrite the rules. What are we doing with Texas independence? It's just one little picture of what's potentially happening across the world. And you know what, Brandon? I don't know if you're ready for this, but there's going to be a lot of people across the world that are struggling. They're going to want the gentle ginger giant genius to come and help them understand how they get out of this damn system. And it, I think it's going to be amazing. I think our phone is going to ring off the hook with massive communities going, all right, if we're going to do this right, we've got to do this in a DeFi scenario. Like think of El Salvador. They went and said, hey, we want Bitcoin. And then, of course, Bitcoin crashed right after they did it. No, 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 no. You need to have the shared value of your people. And that's why I look at Ophir and I'm so excited for them. Because in a way, in a small way, what people are doing is they're saying, I'm going to take even my limited amount of labor, which is literally a piece of you and your creative ability and the sweat from your brow, and you're going to put it into something. And you're going to agree in a community that it has value. And guess what? That's that's what fiat is, right? It's literally a community of people believing in something, and we're going to decree that value. But the difference is there's not going to be a Jerome Powell, and there's not going to be a centralized bank, and there's not going to be a Fed who changes the rules on you in the middle of the game. You know, what, what's the what's the uh, the measure of, of wealth is how many months you can basically survive on your savings, right? Most people can't survive more than one month in the Western world, right? Um, you know, some people very rare, I'd see like maybe like 25% of people can survive three months and then it just gets crazy. Six months. It's like 1% of people in the States. Yeah. So imagine this, take this, for example, somebody from the Philippines, they took their life savings, 500 bucks, for example, which yeah. might've been three months worth of life saving. And they put it in the Texan contract before they even knew about Ophir. They put it in the Texan contract. They, they would be up right now. Their, their ability to survive would have increased without any income out to eight to 10 months at this point. That's very, very strong. Now, what's really, really neat is we don't believe, Matt, that blockchain should only be for the Ivy League, Silicon Valley, yep. uh, those sorts of folks, those, the college-educated folks. We believe that this has to. It must. It's a priority. It's paramount that this be dropped all over the world because this is the only answer. This is the alternative that we've been talking about. It we is. have we have the technology. We can do it now, Matt. Oh, yeah. Well, and it just requires people to be in a position. And you and I have been sales guys, right? We've mm -hmm. sold stuff. And one of the things that good sales guys know is that, one, you don't talk first. And mm -hmm. two, you have to identify the problem that you're solving. And the person you're talking to has to actually relate to it being a problem. It's not latent need. It's active need in the front of their minds. And what do we do? We tell stories after we listen and understand what's going on. We repeat back to people what that story is and where that pain is. And we say, all right, well, here's what's going to happen in this system. The pain is going to be so prevalent and obvious to people that they're going to look for an alternative. You know, you can, you know, timing is so important in so many different scenarios. We are at the right place at the right time. And it's not just you and me. We are literally going to be giving this contract to people, right? 
is there benefit for us? Absolutely in the process. No margin, no mission. There's no reason to do this. But guess what? You can unlock abundance by giving. You can. You can You can unlock abundance in so many different ways. You give in to somebody that's in need in your community, and there's joy and peace in your heart. It's valuable stuff, folks. You don't recognize it. It's a gift. But most people haven't experienced that. And so we're going to come into an era now where people literally who don't have a month's worth of like are going to need food. And we, we've seen movies and stories about the Great Depression. My, my grandfather grew up in the Great Depression. When you realize that people are literally just hanging on, because what happens when your credit cards don't work right. and then you're out of a job? Right, you don't have any income. I mean, do you know how many people are going to be looking online for? Hey, Chad GPT, tell me how to grow tomatoes. Like, like literally, we're going to be going back to how do I actually grow something to eat because I can't afford to eat anything. And now that sounds so doom and gloom, but here's the thing, folks. There was a book that was written by um, C.S. Lewis. It's called The Problem of Pain, and he wrote this after his wife had passed away. And it explores the nature of suffering and the relationship between God and human pain. And a lot of people misunderstand this. They always ask me, they're like, well, why would God, who's so good, you know, create such suffering in the world? Well, why is it that when you fall down you or you put your hand on a hot stove, you learn something, right? Well, why did God make little kids small? Because you don't fall as far. And as you learn and as you grow in all these things, hopefully you're getting smarter and staying away from pitfalls. But here's the thing. We have our pain receptors not as a punishment. We actually have it as a guide. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that's so interesting is that 9-11, the towers fall and people rush into churches. That will happen again, folks. And guess where they're going to be coming to? They're going to be coming to you. And here's the thing. When you're one beggar helping another beggar find food, it will become literal. But what we realize is that when we take the, the collective nature of our proxies of our labor, our time, energy, and effort, and we contribute it together into something that is not changeable, we share in the abundance that it creates. And so this is where, I mean, I think that legacy people will be late to the party in yield. You are early. But I would say this. Do you ever feel like, Brandon, why do you know about this stuff when you know about it before this is happening? Why, you know, why is it that you have this kind of insight and wisdom? Do you think there's a reason for it? Yeah, it's this crazy thing that happened probably about when I was in second grade and I learned how to read. <laughs> <laughs> okay it's gonna be this kind of stream all right <laughs> i mean here's here's what no 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 so in all serious in all seriousness this is why everyone loves you brandon right here this is it on display <laughs> here's what it is man i've stopped listening to the media yeah. but here's what's really cool about the media anything that they're saying you can start searching for the exact opposite. And that's typically the truth. I mean, that's, it's, it's everything nice. that I've talked like, okay, when you listen to my stream, Matt, yeah. On any given day, do I always provide facts and data to back up what's coming out of my mouth? Yep. Every single time. So there is no trick. It's just listen to what they're saying and think the exact opposite and start researching that. And you'll probably find the truth. That's the anti Kramer rule. Isn't that <laughs> what it is? So do you mind pulling up uh pulling up the chart? I'd love for you yeah. to go through where we are right now with Bitcoin and Ethereum, and then I want you to show Texan as well. Do you mind doing that and kind of giving us a little rundown from your trading you know view? What? I don't mind. I do not that'd be great. Facing reality, Arcaxican, um, Samantha, here in this title. That's for sure. Absolutely. All right. Do not like, comment, or subscribe. Peppy, what's going on? Sam Kemp, yes, it is. And very true. What's up, Rav? Good to see you. Um, South Texan Crypto, I didn't say hello to you. Wanted to say hello to you. Jennifer Hudson, good to see you. Oh, and there was one question before you pull that up. I wanted to answer this question from Vivian. Mm -hmm. Hey, Crypto Heartbeat, will there be an off-ramp for fiat on Freedom Swap to a centralized exchange? Can you explain more? So it's just like Uniswap. It is a fork of Uniswap, in fact. 
and Uniswap does not have a, a fiat off ramp. So you would have to find a way to get out to fiat. But what we're saying here is that this is going to drive actually the direct trading of crypto. Mm -hmm. You know, mainstream crypto means that we actually use it as a means of exchange. Well, and you mentioned right at the beginning of this, Brandon, I think I think I thought this is where you were going with this. When all the sanctions were put on Russia, what did they start doing? Well, the, the ruble went right crash, but then it bounced right back up and all the stuff went into Bitcoin. And they said, hey, we'll just go around you. And that's exactly what they did. Well, what is DeFi? But we're going around you. Mm -hmm. And so if they try to take the bullets from us, right, you can own the gun, but you can't have the bullets. That's what fiat off ramps are. It, we're just going to find another way. There'll outlaw, okay. Outlaw drugs, black yep. market for drugs. <laughs> outlaw alcohol, black yep. market for alcohol. Yep. You know, it, stop people from being able to to keep value in their money. They're going to find different ways. They're going to barter. They're going to trade. Cryptocurrency is going to be one piece of a big pie for people to survive because there's actual value in some of these things. People are losing trust right now. Hey, AJ, uh, A2J Tim. Alberta is Canada's Texas, and we would love to help Alberta tokenize and unlock generosity and resources and abundance. So, yes, absolutely. We are birds of a feather. All right. I'm going to share your screen. Here we go. Yeah. All right, guys. We talked about this on stream. These you guys have seen these. This is the uh, S&P 500 index. All right. So we said, you know, every single time that the you know, that this has hit this upper trend line, we have fallen down. We continue to fall down, continue to fall down. Everybody thought this was different this time. But what we saw, Matt, we saw this rally. We saw this rally occur. And what I told everybody, I said, guys, nothing fundamentally has changed about the horrible shape that the economy is in right now. All right. All that changed with this was just a bear market rally. People got excited, pumped the market. But what we saw, I said, guys, if the Fed pivots too early, then we're going to have an issue. All right. So what they did, they saw the jobs report come out. And instead of reacting to that jobs report, they wanted Wall Street to be happy. So they went ahead and dropped it to 25 basis points. Everybody's happy. Everybody's excited. But all they were doing was avoiding reality. And here's yep. the sad thing. this They had the information at the last meeting. So now what are we what are we seeing right now? The Fed is signaling that instead of 25 basis points, they're going to hike it back up to 50 or 75 basis points. What are the Democrats doing? They're blaming it on the Federal Reserve, which is clown world because yep. the, the Congress, they created this problem. The Federal Reserve doesn't pass legislation. Congress can make the Fed go away immediately. Congress can stop spending money immediately. They're looking for a scapegoat and they're pinning, pinning it on Jerome Powell. And Matt, I think. <laughs> I think that they will make a push to try to replace Jerome Powell as the scapegoat for them. I, I, judging by the language that's starting to come out. So what do we see next, guys? Um, I see a potential target for the S&P 500, and I've said this a while. Our next target could be down here around 3,200. 3, wow. And that seems pretty crazy, but uh, I think that's par for the course, especially with these previous resistances previous imprints in the order books back here i think the this level and uh let me do this actually and we'll just keep this on as well um <clears throat> yeah i think that we can be i think wow. that we'll settle somewhere in this range wow by the but, end of the year i think and that's the s p s p if we keep going here uh let's take a look at bitcoin let's see how bitcoin's uh reacting here yeah. And I will go to looking for a good chart here to use BTC USD. So this happened quicker than I thought it would happen. Yeah. Um, I had drawn this a while back, um, but we've fallen out of this already. Bear market rally. I told everybody, I said, look at Wyckoff, look at the, the distribution patterns. And it just pretty much fit this perfectly. People yep. uh, were getting out of the system. The algorithms were trading and chopping people up. This is what happens in bear markets. You get these bear market rallies. People get excited. They go long with leverage. Uh, the market does a downturn. And you have another cascading event right back down to the mean in the short term. And that's what we're seeing here. I think that, you know, our, our first area of resistance or support rather is going to be around 19.8 with Bitcoin. 
if we fall under that, you know, we're going to be between 18 and 13 for a while, I think. Because again, nothing has changed fundamentally about the economy right now. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we take a look at, take a look at Texan. Now there's a couple of things to talk about here, guys. <clears throat> and I had drawn this in the, in the past. This really means nothing. It was a previous line of, of, uh, of resistance that we couldn't quite punch through. But guys, there's two things to point out. When you have, when you have less economic mass, it's much easier to move to the upside and it's also much easier to move to the downside. The second huge thing here, guys, this is a product of having most of your liquidity tied up in USDC. All right. You're not tied with Bitcoin pairs. Most of your liquidity is not tied up in Ethereum. Now, some of it is, but this is what's cool because when the market takes a downturn, if you're paired up with BTC, you're paired up with Ethereum or some of these major pairs, you're going to go down with it. Yep. And that's not what we're seeing here. So, you know, one of the one of the neat things here is if you are going to make trades, you, you could consider making those trades in USDC uh, because of the stability. And, and that just kind of helps everybody else out. Okay, will, so, you, will you answer yeah. this question for Opamamian? Because this is, you know, <laughs> it's obviously not true that. Yeah the stock market does not create up in crypto because of what you just said. So you, will you answer that question? Yeah. So th th we've always wanted to hear the narrative of decoupling come true, which the stock market goes down and crypto goes up. But what we have seen in 2021, 2022, and I got to paint this picture, most of crypto holdings at this point, at least on Coinbase, because that's what that's data we can measure. This most people hold who hold Bitcoin are actually institutional at this point. 85% of the market is institutional. So if 85% of the market is institutional and the market dumps very, very heavily with the stock market, what's that mean? Institutions are dumping it. They don't believe that Bitcoin or cryptocurrency is a hedge against market downturns. Right. And that's evidenced by how hard it has crashed. Okay. So th this narrative that that it's decoupling is is mostly it's it's not there yet. They just don't see it as a viable hedge against downturns. So what happens when the stock market people want to off risk uh, not only in stocks but also in cryptocurrency and you got to understand that you have publicly traded companies worth billions of dollars like Coinbase for example. Coinbase's uh, valuations are in, is significantly tied to Bitcoin. Now, how is that? Because it's perception. Okay, it's how people feel about this thing. It's it's that's that's the value part of it. It's a portion of the equation. So, Wall Street is very closely tied to to Bitcoin, and uh, and it's it's going to continue to pump and dump like this, regardless of the narrative that we hear out there in the ether. It's just not true. So, let me ask you this. This is my Pollyanna naive idealist view mm -hmm. if in fact this is the beginning of the run on the bank and if this is truly going to be a devastation which i think it potentially will be ultimately black swan event worse than 2008 all banks fail basically and what you're what you've said all to be true but here's the thing that's interesting DeFi crypto trustless yield things like hex right? Things that are truly immutable, no admin keys, censorship resistant. And of course, you're right. You know, you've tied things, Hart's Law to BTC or Ethereum. But I believe that maybe not in the short run, but in the long run, we do see a decoupling because the fact that everything's fallen off the table. DeFi crypto separates itself from essentially these things are controlled by the centralized parties that were overinflated because of the printing of money during COVID is that this future is where are people going to be able to get yield? And we will notice that in my opinion, that decoupling when we see institutions coming into trustless yield, but the DeFi story and narrative, no one knows it. That's really in the market. They've been just, you know, suckling off of this uh, money and this money's going away. Well, how long is it going to take for them to understand that, hold on, there is yield to be had. However, it's not in the usual places. And I think that's just going to take time. But I do believe that DeFi crypto at some point in time will decouple from the stock market. 
one of the things that everybody in this chat needs to understand that in terms of pure knowledge about cryptocurrency, you guys are 10 to 15 years ahead of the rest of the market. Yep. And, I, and I'm not making that up. You're 10 to 15 years ahead. And, and all that, hold on, all that is attributed in my mind to, to, to Richard Hart. 100% of that, man. I wouldn't be where I am with, without his knowledge. Okay, no doubt. Now, <laughs> let's look at this. You familiar with BitMEX? BitMEX was a, a leverage trading platform for a long time. Arthur Hayes was one of the founders. Arthur Hayes got in big trouble. He had to go to prison, this and that. He gets out of prison. He makes a statement yesterday that says that I want to create a stable coin based on the price of Bitcoin valued in U.S. dollars. OK, now, what did he what did he, he goes on to say? He says, I, I want this to be as centralized as possible. Now, why did he say that? He says, because there's more liquidity in centralized entities, which are connected to the inflation river. OK, yeah. a large mouth of inflation from the federal government, from the Treasury, from the Federal Reserve. He doesn't understand the power of cryptocurrency. OK, he doesn't understand you don't have to have massive amounts of liquidity to float a huge population of people. All right. And he doesn't all, he also doesn't understand that because there are no centralized players, people, regular folks are actually incentivized to come in and provide liquidity. If things take a tank, it's, it's a beautiful in, in, uh, incentivize, incentivization is what is it? Yeah. Incentivization structure. Incentivization. Yeah. Sure. So um, here's here's what we have to understand here. DeFi has weathered the worst economic storm possible. That's why, Matt, we don't want, we're not actively pursuing people from purchasing Texan and putting it on centralized exchanges yeah. because of the massive amount of negative externality that that poses, as opposed to putting it on Uniswap or as opposed to putting it on Freedom Swap or PulseX, which have been battle hardened and proven more than anything ever. Now, if I'm telling you that people are 10 to 15 years behind, I will also say that if you're an institution that has the money to pay people to learn this, they might be about five years behind us. Yeah. But I keep saying, guys, longer time horizons with DeFi is going to make you win. All you all you have to do is not to nuke your account. <laughs> all right. Don't go in day trade dollar cost average. And I'm not just saying, I'm not saying Texan. I'm just saying, generally speaking, that's all you have to do. Just don't nuke yourself and you're going to be fine. You're going to be great. Yeah, totally. What's up? The bacon sandwich dot crypto. What's up? Legends. Good to see you here. Danny, the singer is also stopping in to say hello. South Texas crypto had a question for you, Rags. Yep. Yep. Have you considered a blow off top first before 29 and 2008 crash since history shows that we usually go up during end of rate hikes, pausing, and the end is near when they start cutting rates? From the start, here's the rule. From the start of rate hikes, from the beginning, we always see a pump. 18 months after the first rate hike is the average when we see the crash. And we're sitting right on top of it right now. Wow. It's 18 months. If you go back in history, just, just to let you know. That's crazy. Yep. yep. It doesn't always repeat itself what it rhymes. Is that what they say about it? Wow. 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 This has been epic, dude. Epic. Well, I wanna I'm gonna finish up with the with the um with this story. And this is what we talked about prior to you coming in here. We we're talking really about this idea of let me get back here, tokenizing communities. Folks, mm -hmm. the the whole theme of this whole thing is how to onboard the world. I shared that video when Sam got it, you know, oh, Sam cool. and Jim Rat, yeah. and they were like, oh my gosh, like this is crazy. Yeah. Folks, here's what we are doing. Brandon and I are getting extremely serious. We are building a, a development firm called Infinite Development. Why? Because we already, as just buddies and friends working together with volunteer developers, are having conversations. We're having conversations with a group that has 6 million members. That's just one of many that will come. And if we do see this legacy financial system burn, like I think we're going to see, we're going to have more and more opportunities to tokenize. So what we have here is a franchise model. We're literally taking our contract, which is DeFi, 
with Trustless Yield, the first endowment contract on the blockchain. And we are working with communities. Why? Because that's where trust exists, right? 444,000 people in the Texas nationalist movement, they, they have no idea what they're sitting on. Mm -mm. They have no idea. And you know what we decided to do? Prove it to them. Give them a gift and prove it to them. Some have caught it like, you know, Sam, Sam. Kemp. Yeah, yeah, Sam Kemp got it. But others will, and they will continue to. But then there's Ophir over on the far right there in the east, right? On the other side is Ophir Crypto. The same contract, but it's with 3,000 churches and growing of serving people that are in poverty. And John, who's the founder of the Ophir Crypto Token, he is the one that's advocating for them. You need to take a look at him. You need to go to OphirCrypto.com. You need to see what they're doing. That's the second community. There are several others, and I use this map just to say there will likely be places across the world that will have DeFi crypto because they're going to be like, where do we get yield anywhere else? How do we work together? How do we mine gold that's in our hearts? How do we utilize our economic energy and value and not let it degrade and be eaten up by inflation? This is an alternative to it. But what we decided to say is we're going to get serious about our work in infinite development, and we are ultimately going to build a DEX a decentralized exchange on Ethereum. We're not trying to compete on the Pulse chain. The Pulse chain, in my opinion, is going to be where all the business happens that is decentralized. It's where the business of freedom and sovereignty is going to happen. But we want to have a place where the people on the Ethereum side can have benefit and we tie together all those communities on the Ethereum side. That's with the unifier token. So the DEX itself is going to have 100% of the fees are going to go straight to LPs. And then the protocol fee is going to buy and burn Unifier token. We will have no benefit from the DEX of any fees. Those fees are going to be used to buy and burn the Unifier token, just like PulseX on Pulse Chain. The beauty of that is it differentiates us when we go talk to additional communities that we're bringing something to the table that they can't do on their own. And it's the power and the benefit of drawing and unifying those people together. Brandon, this was really important to you, finding a way to connect all of these together. Can you talk to that? <clears throat> yeah. So if you go back to that map um, and, and we take a look at all the possibilities here, okay? This is one, two, three, four, five, what? Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven on this map. It could be 10. It could be five. It could be 15. It could be more. We don't know. And they don't need to be geographically no, located either. It, right? it, 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 you, you don't, but it's it's based on community. So right. m in my mind, I'm like, well, how are we going to tie all of these together? Because if we tie all of these together, those fibers in between the communities is what really creates strength amongst people. And, and kind of that cross-pollination amongst communities as well. I wanted to find a way to be able to connect all these people together. And, and that's when we came up with Freedom Swap. And the, the neat thing, too, is there is no DEX on the Ethereum side that follows the, the first and the fundamental principles of, of kind of what RH taught us. So, you know, if you are in a community and you're going to be transacting on Ethereum, which many of you are because many of you have all sorts of stakes on the Ethereum side with Hedron and with uh, Hex and with uh, Texan and with all these, all these things. There's going to be value in both chains. How are you going to transact? Well, we want to make something that ca caters and tailors towards those people. Now, here's the neat thing too, Matt. You know, this is obviously just, uh, this is a rough draft here. But there's some cool stuff that, that we can be announcing as we move forward in the future about really making an effort to connect everybody together if you're going to be transacting on the Ethereum side. Yep, absolutely. So if you're somebody that is, so let me also back up and say this, with all the regulatory stuff that's happening, our attorneys, and you've, if you've been following the Texan token, you know this, our attorney said you can't do a sacrifice. And so 100% of the money went to the TNM, 100% of the money goes to GemEffect in the donation phase with Ophir. And so we, as we build the DEX, which is Freedom Swap and Unifier is the incentive token, and we look to identify and work with and be proactive about engaging other communities in this very, very unique time in history, we are raising capital from 
from those who are actually accredited investors. And an accredited investor is someone that has at least 250 or combined $300,000 in a household annually of income or has a million dollars worth of net worth. Okay, Those are people that the SEC believes are smart enough to be accredited and they don't they, they can basically determine their risk. And so what you do in these scenarios when you're raising capital for this is we're raising $3 million, $2 million of which is going to be used as liquidity on the decks. And then a million is going to be used for our you know, work and operation of identifying and working with additional communities. In exchange for those folks that are actually a part of Infinite Development, they will receive not only any of the the distribution from the company but they will also participate in each of the ongoing projects from here on out and that's really the the thing that you have to look at is well do i want to be a part of all of these communities moving forward do i believe in this you know pseudo franchise model and this vision for bringing DeFi to the world where trust actually currently exists these centers of trust and so if you're interested in that in the description is my email address, it's matt at b4.vc, and you'll see it in the in the description. And I can send you an executive summary if you're somebody that is qualified. Um, and being a part, you can be a part of this. And you would join us as we um, identify and we continue to work with these communities. In my opinion, this window of time of helping people is upon us and this is the time in which it's the bottom so imagine the people in the philippines who scrape together 100 bucks us and what if one of these projects does have that kind of hex like experience there's no forward-looking statements we don't know what it's going to do it's a complete risk however in my opinion how we unlock generosity is by enabling people regular people across the world to be able to participate in a system that doesn't change the rules on them and that's the power of DeFi. so if you're somebody that's interested you know send me an email request that executive summary and we'll have a conversation about what we're doing but it is our goal that here um before may 1st that we're going to have this round closed and that we're going to move forward for the launch on this timeline so you know, Ophir pro likely looks like right now would launch in, if not late May, early June. And then we would look for the summer for the launch of Freedom Swap and the Unifier token. And there was a question. Um, and then ultimately, obviously, the next communities that we're having conversations with now, and I think many, many more will come. South Texas Crypto said, if Unifier launches before Pulse Chain, will it be able to claim each 30 days on ETH? and PLS, or is the whole project only on ETH? Well, it's on Ethereum. That's the goal. That we're, that's where it's going to be. However, likely it's going to be copied over as well onto the Pulse chain. It's not built for the Pulse chain. We will support it. But yes, it's the Ethereum. It's meant to be on Ethereum. It's meant for an option for all of these people. Here's the thing that I think is important to note. There's a transition period for people. When I say we're on Ethereum and we got a price chart, people don't go, what's Ethereum? If we we're on Pulse Chain, they'd, I'd have to explain Pulse Chain. So there's going to be a transition time for people to understand, oh, this is a different copy of Ethereum. So we are investing in Ethereum right now for this process, but we are going to support both chains. We're going to launch all of our projects on Ethereum and on Pulse Chain. In this case, it might be a copy, but even if it, you know, the Pulse Chain launches, we will still launch on the Pulse Chain with all of our new communities as well, because that is what we feel is going to be the long term, ultimate, vertically aligned ecosystem of freedom and sovereignty. Yeah. That's and where we're, we're investing. But here's the important thing to know, guys. We're, we're not going to launch something half ass. All right. So the big thing about a decentralized exchange is you want things to be very, very liquid. You want to have a lot of liquidity over there. That's why Pulse PulseX is going to be so incredible. It's going to have so much liquidity day one. Now people are going to fork it over. Uniswap's eventually going to fork over to Pulse Chain. In fact, it'll be copied over day one. All they got to do is create a new front end, make a couple tweaks. It'll work. But what you don't have is the massive amounts of liquidity. I think what Matt and I are saying is that liquidity, the bulk of that liquidity and that that lifting power is going to be on the Ethereum side initially. Now, one thing that's important to know, too, with any layer one 
you know, you want a layer one that is very liquid amongst many different exchanges. That way, if one fails, the whole system doesn't fail. So things can be aggregated out from in that way. I think we're pretty far away from getting to that point, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of want to see how things develop over there before we make any sort of decision to hop over there. But there is no intention whatsoever of of competing with PulseX. And, and it's going to be a while before we would even consider moving that way for liquidity reasons. Right, right. So, Taryn, you're absolutely 100% correct. Unifier itself is completely distinct from the DEX. However, the DEX becomes a buyer and burner. So it, it becomes just a constant buyer. That's the only relationship. So, yes, the Unifier token is separate and distinct from it. It can be claimed by people who have max stake length of HEX or any other uh, of our community tokens, which would be Texan and Ophir at this point. But, yes, you're absolutely right. The, the DEX is just a function to buy and burn it. And honestly, these tokenomics, which are is what makes it so exciting for the Pulse chain and Pulse X. Like I am super excited. I think personally, Pulse X is the big, big winner on Pulse chain, especially in the first six to 12 months. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, it's always depended. It's, it's dependent upon the following for me. Uh, I've said this before. We look back at DeFi summer in 2020. I think it was 2020. And we saw that big market pump and everybody's getting excited. Yep. Um, we saw four or five decentralized exchanges launch. We saw the pancake swap launch. We saw the sushi swap launch. We saw the uni swap launch and we saw a couple others. <clears throat> Those decentralized exchanges in times of high volume go absolutely bananas, Matt. Yeah. Bananas. In three months, these exchanges were doing, I think uh, on the high end, one exchange did a 600X and the low end, one exchange did like a 50X. I think the average is about 300. 300X in three to six months is absolutely insane, folks. Yeah. So if Pulse X launches in conjunction with a massive bull market, and all of these retail traders come flooding in looking for places to put their money to become overnight millionaires, they are going to flood into Pulse Chain. Yep. And Pulse Chain, the way that it's built, Pulse X, the way that Pulse X is built, it will absolutely go crazy. Yep. Um, so I, I would prepare people for that. Now, long term, you know, I'm going to go with Pulse Chain. I'm going to go with Pulse Chain long term because Pulse Chain is, is what really scales out. Will PulseX always be the most liquid DEX on Pulse Chain? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uniswap has, you know, what we were doing research on that, Matt, $3.5 billion, um, you know, at some point per month in, in total volume. And take that, and they're, they're number one on most all chains out there. Yep. Could could PulseX do that? I don't know. It Does it have the, the brand name that Uniswap does? Not yet. Hopefully it will. So there's just a lot of competition in that in that market. We'll see what happens. Well, I, I like Pulse Chain though, long term. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense too. And if you think about it, you, just like on ETH, you're going to need PLS to be able to do any transactions, and that in and of itself is big. And yeah. it's deflationary. I mean, mm -hmm. the innovations of Richard Hart, Brandon. Thanks for joining today. Thank you all. This is a very special stream. We are on a mission, folks, to give and to give and to give. And if there's any message that we get from all of this stuff and empty coiner continuing to pray for your friend's son, this is this is it. Like this is probably the best stream that's wrapped all of these things together of what we're doing, why we're doing it, why this community is so special, what really matters and where the value actually resides. I just want you to do what Brandon said. Don't nuke yourself. Understand the long term. And thanks for being a part of this. And, and I want to say a special thanks to all of the hexagons who have been um, so supportive of us because, you know, it's you walk a fine line in all of this. And one of the things I want to just give credit to hexagons for is the fact that it's very, very, very difficult to prime a pump. And that's what you have to do. Community and building community is hard. We've been slogging it out. We've been creating content. We've been doing all of this stuff. But folks, I promise you, the future is bright, but we're going to go through some tough times. And I hope that you're the kind of people, because I think we've attracted a lot of mature people 
that you're going to identify that need and you're going to do the same thing we're trying to do on a global scale, you're going to do on a local scale. And that serve other people, care for them, be sensitive to others in addition to yourself. Don't be a martyr, but be someone who is thoughtful and helpful to others. Be like Brandon, basically, is what I'm saying. Folks, thanks so much for all your time today. Have a great weekend and do not mess with Texas. See you, folks.